Hi, I want to add something to my last video about rig optimization and this time I want to focus on keyframes and see if they influence the scene performance in a real-world animation scenario. Brian Horgan on ZG Talk mentioned that and that's why I want to test this in a real animation and also um, with R17 because in R17 the the timeline has been updated and the performance of many keyframes is much better. So let's see um, how that plays a role in a real animation. So we have five characters and they are all animated and we have quite a complex rig again, but this time it's not the character object, it's a custom rig. And also I have spline controllers, at that time I didn't use polygonal um, controllers. But in this case I will show you it plays a big role. So let me show you the timeline. And you can see that we talk about quite a heavy animation here. So we have many, many keyframes. And if I show them all in the timeline, it's not so fast. Let me just select all the keys and see how many we have. So we have 11,400 keys here. So if that's not enough, I don't know. All right. So, but as you can see, also the the um, timeline is really slow. So I will just do a quick frames per second test here. So we test the animation. It will run through all the animation. And in the last video, I, I measured with the HUD display here, but that's not accurate so this time I will do it on the on this command here and the geometry is not subdivided it's not a factor here the slowness is something else so all right we have 5.6 frames per second and this is not good. We want more frames per second. So now I will do following. I will disable null display and joint display and also spline display. We want to see the splines in this case because all the controllers are splines, but let's see what that makes. And still the animation is not so good. So we found out now that splines display is not the not the reason here. But what if we disable the splines? So the next thing I want to do is I select all the splines. And these are 122 objects and I will disable them. And let's see. Wow. Much, much faster. As you can see, this is nearly real time, I would say. Well, Okay, 14, 15 frames. So that's around 10 frames more. So the biggest factor here is the spline. So I really wonder why that is so big in this case, but you can see that it's not about the keyframes in the timeline. These, of course, slow down if you work in the um, timeline and you have all the um, keys selected and you show them all in the curves editor, that will not 
be good because everything is really slow. But um, as long as you select a few controllers and work with only that and then select other controllers, I would say with R17 you can work quite good with five characters. And Brian Horgan mentioned a trick I want to tell you also because he had to work with 12 characters and this must be hell in Cinema 4D. So he uh, mentioned that you can, when you are done with the animation of some characters, like in this case the characters in the back are not really important and I would um, say the animation is finished, you can just bake out the mesh as an alembic file and re-import it and this will um, improve the performance really a lot. And then you should just make a backup of the animation of course so you don't lose anything. But um, yeah that's a trick he mentioned and yeah that's really a good thing to have the all the characters as reference in the scene but not um, so heavy. Alright, so keep in mind splines make problems sometimes and keyframes are improved with R17. Alright, thank you, bye bye.